In this video, we're asked to find the drag force on a model due to the flow through the wind tunnel. We're told that the wind tunnel is round and has a one meter diameter, so it's like this. And we're also given that the upstream flow velocity is 30 meters per second and that that flow is uniform across the wind tunnel. The downstream end, we're told that the velocity is linearly varying with the distance from the center line out to the edge of the wind tunnel. And we're given an expression for that as V2 equals v, some V max times lowercase r, which is the distance from the center line, divided by the radius of the wind tunnel itself. We're also given that the upstream pressure is 1.5 kilopascals and the downstream pressure is 1 kilopascal. Okay? So the big difference here between this problem and some of the other examples we've done is that we have a spatially varying velocity field at the downstream end. The good news is, is that we're going to start the problem exactly the same way. We're going to draw our control volume. So to do that, we're going to go perpendicularly across the upstream face, perpendicularly across the downstream face, and then align the sides with the boundaries of the wind tunnel, right? Just like this. That means that the only fluxes we need to consider are across the two boundaries, and that will, will label those surface one and surface two. Okay? What's step two? Well, just like with the other problems, it's going to be apply conservation of mass. And we'll write that out in its general form. So we have d over dt times the integral over the control volume of rho dv plus the integral over the control surface of rho v dot dA is equal to zero. We're told nothing about the unsteadiness of the flow, so we can assume it's steady. So this goes to zero, the first term does. And then now we just need to sum the fluxes across, our, across the wind tunnel, across our control volume. The upstream side is pretty straightforward. It's going to be perpendicular to our dA, so it's just going to be a simple multiplication. It's going to be V1 times A. So we'll have negative, because it's an inflow, rho V1A. And to that, we're going to add the flux from the second surface. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit different. Now we have a spatially varying flow across that surface. And so we need to think about how we're going to define our differential area so that we can make the integral easier. And so to do that, if we have a cross section of our wind tunnel here, because we're told it's round, we don't really want to take that and divide it like in orthogonal little squares and have to integrate around that. It's fairly complicated. The same thing that we did for the rectangle if we took slices, that's really pretty complicated as well. And so one thing we can do is, what if we defined our radius or our area as an annulus like this around the center, where this is our dA, and this distance between the two we call dr, then we can define dA is equal to 2 pi r dr. That gives us the radius, our, our dA there, and it also puts that as a function of r itself, the lowercase r, which is also our the dependent variable in our velocity equation. Okay, so we can plug that now into our integral. So now, in this case, we're going to integrate from zero to capital R, the radius of rho times v, which is v max times r over r, we'll multiply that by the area, which is 2 pi r dr, that's all equal to 0, okay, so as you go to 0, the rows actually cancel out, and we can take that integral, so let's do that, I'm going to move to the other side of the board here, so now we're going to take this integral, and we're going to say, that v1 times 2 pi, no, oh, excuse me, I'm writing the, I want the area here, so it's pi r squared plus 
Let's go ahead and pull the constants out of that integral. We're going to have v max over r times 2 pi times the integral of r squared dr is equal to 0. Okay? And the integral we're going to take from 0 to r. So let's do that. So this would be negative. So we have negative v1 pi r squared plus 2 pi v max over r times r cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to r. So I just took that integral. And that's all going to equal 0. Okay. We can simplify that a little bit further and plug in r and 0 to take the difference there. And we get negative v1 pi r squared plus 2 pi v max over 3 r squared equals 0. You can see now that several things are going to cancel. The pi is going to cancel. And r squared is going to cancel. You can now rearrange that and we get v max is equal to 3 halves v1 is equal to 45 meters per second. Okay, so now we have a quantity for Vmax and we can now move on to the next step in our problem here. So, just like with our other problems, we now need to apply the conservation of momentum. And we know that because we're asked to find a force. Really, anytime we're asked to find a force in any of our problems, we know that we're going to end up doing conservation of momentum. So, let's do that. So, we're going to 3, apply conservation of momentum okay and just like we did before we're going to write out it in, in its full form so d over dt integral over the control volume of rho u dv plus the integral over the control surface of rho u v dot dA, and that's going to equal the sum of the forces in the x direction. Now we can go ahead and jump straight to the force in the x direction because all of our flow velocities are aligned in the x direction, so we have a pretty good sense that there's not going to be much in the y or z direction. Okay, so the first thing we do is we're told again nothing about the unsteadiness of the flow, so we can assume it's steady, so this term goes to zero. The next thing we want to do is look at the sum of the forces in the x direction. So let's draw our control volume again. I'll draw a mini version of it so that we can write out our forces. Okay, so at the upstream side, we're going to have pressure. So we're going to have P1 times A. We'll have the same thing on the downstream side. We'll have P2 times A. And the only other force acting in the system in the x direction is going to be our drag force, our resulting force. We're going to draw it this way, so that's going to be Rx. Okay? So I'm going to write that on the left-hand side and move the control surface integral to the right-hand side, and it'll look like this. So a P1A minus P2A minus Rx is equal to... Now we need to think about what... The, flux, different, the sum of the fluxes are across our two surfaces. Okay, so for the first surface, again, it's a simple multiplication. So we have rho times v1 times v1 times a, and that's an influx, so negative rho v1 squared a. And then our second term here, so we're going to, to that we're going to add, and this time we need to do the same thing we did for the conservation of mass, we need to do that integral because it's a spatially varying velocity. So we're going to say, we're going to take the integral from 0 to r of rho times our velocity, which is Vmax times r over r squared, and we got to square both because we have two, it shows up both in the actual term, our b, which is rho u, 
and it also shows up in our v.da because it's a lot they're aligned parallel it's simply a multiplication and so you get v times a and so we square those and then our differential area which is 2 pi r d r okay so now I'm just going to rewrite this and, and group it a little differently. So we're going to say P1 minus P2 times pi r squared minus rx is equal to negative rho V1 squared times pi r squared plus I'm going to pull out the constants here. So rho is a constant, v max squared is a constant, capital R squared is a constant, and 2 pi is a constant. So we're going to get 2 pi v max squared over capital R squared times the integral from 0 to r of r cubed dr. Okay? Now we can take that integral. So we're going to get, again, P1 minus P2 times pi r squared minus rx is equal to negative rho v1 squared pi r squared plus, sorry, I missed a rho up here, so there should be a rho in that term, and this will be 2 pi rho v max squared over r squared r to the fourth over 4 evaluated at 0 and r. Okay? Now we can actually plug in our numbers and start to solve this problem. So let's do that. We have 1500 Newtons per meter squared minus 1,000 Newtons per meter squared times pi times 0 0.5 meters squared minus Rx. There, there's our left-hand side, and that's going to equal minus 1.2 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed times 30 meters per second times pi times 0 0.5 meters squared. This should be squared as well. Plus, okay, we can cancel out a couple of the R's. So that makes it a little easier. We get 2 pi times 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed times 45 meters per second squared over 0 0.5 meters squared times 0 0.5 meters to the fourth over 4. Okay? And then we plug in all our numbers and rearrange and we get Rx is equal to 286.7 newtons. Okay? However, that's the force, the resulting force on the fluid, on our control volume due to the presence of the model. And so the drag force on the model is going to be equal and opposite from Newton's third law. And so we get the force of drag on the model is equal to negative 286.7 newtons. Okay, so that's an example of how we deal with a spatially varying velocity field. And the key points are here are thinking about how we select our differential area and how we draw our control volume. Okay, see you next time.